Welcome to another episode of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. Our guest today, Mr. Sopnanil Borova, uh, retired as a IAS with a almost 37 years of continuous service with the government of Assam. That's not the reason that he's here in our podcast. As a person, I have seen him doing a lot of things which usually most of us would like to avoid. He has been doing uh, as a qualification other than his IAS. He has done a diploma in tourism, business management from IGNU and he had been in the Assam Meghalaya cadre as an IAS from 1980 to, to, to 2016. And that's quite a quite long a time. Long, long time. Uh, so, welcome to our studios of Akta for this episode of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. I am very, very thankful to you that you have very sportingly said yes on the first request. No, no, it, 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 this is actually a continuity of. Uh, the relationship between two families. Right. So I, there was no question of not me not saying no. And secondly, it's a great effort that you are doing now that you are retired and trying to, you know, establish a bridge in between our generation, your generation, and the generations that have come. And you've been a teacher, so your contact with the younger generation is much more. You understand their language, their mind, or what they are thinking of today in the context of older people. The whether they are thinking of these old foggies or do they really want to look forward to talk to us uh, 
as to what we did in our times or what how have times changed so much that uh, you know there is absolutely no connection between them and us yeah. so i think your great uh, effort in this is trying to build a bridge in between the generations and i think because we in a, are in an advantageous position because we are a second generation of people who have been involved in social life yeah why yeah. i'm saying social life mm. is that uh, people tend to you know cut away artists or cut away creative people from as not being a part of society society means only people who uh, live in a very organized life and the other people are you know rebellious kind of a thing who are doing new things it is not that the as you remember that everything of a the times greatly depends on the culture of those times yeah we call it the british days the culture of the british days we call i mean all this is so much that uh, we tend to forget and it's nice that uh, you have done this uh, venture after your retirement to really bring all of us together and again i am happy to be here i hope uh, through your podcast i'll be speaking to a lot of people uh, in the midst of these great paintings of Asudev here surrounding me. Yes, and that and that is uh, one of the purpose that people should connect to their roots. Yes, and uh, I think uh, the viewers uh, would like will be very happy to know that Shaknil Borua, father, Louis Kumar, Rudra Borua, he is a gem of a person who has really uh, worked. entire life for the artists i still remember uh, i i i i i may not be uh, very right that uh, you will be uh, the person who could tell this i think the first time that uh, you know the government of assam was purchasing paintings from artists began at the time of your father yes in, in fact this is around uh, 74 75 exactly that we didn't have an organized art gallery even right and so it was decided that first we must have a temporary art gallery if you remember it yes. was the site of sabha yes yes bhavan the bhagwati prasad yeah. borua bhavan yeah. the first floor was taken on a rent and black curtains were drawn <laughs> right. to make it into a studio uh, and that is how art began and i think my sad part of it is that it was those 3 years only that government bought paintings from exactly uh, i was from just, the from the yeah, yeah i tried quite a lot but because and I, it is it is another you know it's it's is really wonderful it really usually does not happen in public life other than the politicians that the son also has taken the same chair of his father and that way i am you are you are the <laughs> one uh, you know example and Uh, your involvement with the artists with the musicians you have been a wonderful narrator uh, a theater person and you were the first secretary of simanta shankar the kala kshetra also that that's a big thing and you are also a co convener of intact assam chapter yes uh, now when we talk about intact it takes me to one of your recent book guwahati i was just going through the book library of amazon and i suddenly came across this book which is guwahati by sapnil borua i made no second thought and i just got two copies of this oh so thank you and, very much i think that must have contributed to my first uh, i am not uh, this is what you have brought and this is what i had uh, so and nice all through my journey i had recently been to a place in dehradun all through my journey i was going through this book such a wonderful flashback you know i could relate my childhood memories with this book oh, and it was that day that i thought that one of the episodes at least will be with sapnil borua because what he has written may not be accessible to all people but i am sure through this podcast many people would come to know actually what was the idea behind this book let us hear from sapnil uh, well i think i would rather go to the other book yeah you know i began writing this book first because if if you look at my 
bio yeah. you will see that i was born in shillong and right. raised for a great part of my life yes, in shillong yes, yes. and uh, this was the book i wrote first immediately after retirement that you know the assamis people were there in shillong for about uh, 98 years no that till, is they, they till it became 1874 <laughs> the shillong became the capital the first assamese people went and joined the assam secretariat and the different government uh-huh. offices uh-huh. there in fact the first superintendent of the ag office was poet hiran bhattacharya's father oh yeah uh, and uh, his his mother was born there mm-hmm. and so she was given a very english name okay. her name was sweet okay <laughs> yeah. so they stayed somewhere near jail road right and that is where all the babus first uh-huh. went and uh-huh. put up and so, the and the setup of uh, jail road even today is to some extent uh, not very really uh, not so much because of the modernity and uh, the, uh, apartments coming up in shillong and hotels and other things but if but you go till there are places uh, the, the feel of the, the place feel has, of the place is there in places there. like laban laban uh, and then you know, that part jail road chapala bookstore right, transport right. Uh, the shillong municipality office then uh-huh. rai gor is another very famous yeah. uh, that house building there. is still there <laughs> they are that, still that, there that, that, that the jail road there. school yes and a few old and then uh, the uh, matri mandir yeah. and those things and then going down uh, to what was your uh, you know uh, you studied in shillong you had studied in the st edmund school and then the uh, uh, you have worked uh, also studied in st edmunds and uh, st peter's yes and then you came to guwahati don bosco and uh, no. i think that was because that was of because of the shift, shift of the capital right. my father I mean, in fact my father had left quite early hmm. he had left shillong in 1960 hmm. but somehow my grandmother maternal grandmother said that you don't have to go because we were about seven eight cousins right all staying together in my grandfather's maternal grandfather's house huh. uh and so since all of us were studying together there was no way that uh, i was staying with my parents initially but when they were transferred to guwahati somewhere around after the chinese war mm-hmm. uh we decide i was staying back and it was only after i reached high school that's class 7 that uh, uh, my aunties got married and there was nobody to look after us there the elder ones i was the youngest one then uh-huh. so i there was no guardian for me so okay. my parents decided that you should come down to guwahati that is how i came down oh, so, so my uh, half uh, of my life was in shillong, shillong. half of my life is in a, was in guwahati so it's a great uh, and no apart from that you have uh, during your services you have yeah, that, and the, no that, but uh, uh, you know the childhood is something yes, that you know, really stu- yeah, right. student days are some talking about the childhood memories of shillong I still remember the ASTC buses at that time that used to go in the morning from Guwahati to Shillong and it would reach around after 6 7 hours. Yeah. We had lower and upper seats. Yeah, lower and upper seats. Can you share something of that? Well, this was something like this that you had to come catching a rickshaw and be here in uh, Paltan Bazar station in the uh, red bus and there was upper and lower. The first 6 seats uh, were the upper class and the beyond <coughs> the uh, first is six okay. rows was lower class yeah. and the fare was half the advantage of the upper class was that you could not feel the turns, turns. Right. and so there was little chance of you vomiting <laughs> because anybody going from the plains who is not accustomed to normally used to carry a lemon to smell it all the way so that he would It'll not vomit. vomit on the way and or there was a spill called avomit Evomin. So and all children were given the evomin. Do you remember uh, the there was a uh, no, sweet uh, ah, shop? Yes. The, there were two main Nongpu. Three, three sweet shops. One was called the first class restaurant. Okay. That was uh, you know that was in Nongpu. That was in Nongpu uh-huh. where tea was served in a pot and yeah, it was right. given very uh-huh. English uh-huh. style. Uh-huh. You got sandwiches, you got cutlets and all. Uh-huh. Then you had Matri Vanda, Boshers shop. Matri Vanda. Matri Vanda was uh, the. It was Sa- open to all. Sa Singara part, <laughs> and then you had uh, the little market there. Yeah. And can you imagine that we used to get deer meat, venison in winter, in <laughs> Nongpu. Now it's a crime if you have to kill yeah. them. But that apart. Right. And then across there was a ghost diary, where you used to get the sweetest of 
curds which could compete with curds from Calcutta. Right. So people who came from Calcutta were normally taken to Ghosh Diary and that is where they had, uh, after having the sweet curds, Mishti Doi, they used to want to say, Mishti Doi? <laughs> you know that, or the all Calcutta expression coming out. But the shop is no more. There. No, none of the shops. None of the shops are there because I have been trying to find out what is. None that? of the shops are there. They have become uh, malls now. Okay. And I think one has become a state bank branch. Ah. So what those are the and uh, memories that uh, still you know they keep on coming to you uh, of Shillong. Well, what should I say? One is my school. And oh, uh, before I, before you start, I will tell you, Swapnilinda is one of the, he has got the wittiest answers uh, that I have come across <laughs> for any kind of thing. So please be, you know, uh, I have informed you, uh, there will be a lot of uh, things that will be coming. No, I think this. so, so, so nice of you. Let's see. Uh, I mean, Shillong, I don't know where to begin and where to end. Well, first thing was the naughty things we did was the best thing. If you remember, I used to remember that my grandmother used to have a lot of cows. She used to sell milk. So the cows were grazed in polo ground. And we used to go all the way to polo ground. And it so happened that sometimes we used to go in pajamas without informing our parents. And it so happened one day that they couldn't find me in the house and the whole of police of Shillong were looking for me. Ultimately, uh, someone said that he, I saw him going along with the cows. Okay. <laughs> so there was the, that Krishna in me from my childhood. <laughs> Naughty, cows and, and roaming around. And that is the, you know, see, uh, when we talk about genes, it's the genes that is there in him. You know, we I, I, had <laughs> uh, you, it's such a, you know, uh, you know, Luminia, you know, like when we talk about Luit Kumar Rudraparva, and this, it's very natural that it will come to you because he okay. has been a theatre person. You have given your voice for about 102 documentaries. Yes, sir. And uh, you have been in the theatre, in the cinema and in television. And apart from that, you were the first SMS announcer of Overseas Services so of the All India Radio from Delhi. That was another experience, I must tell you. Yeah. Uh, well, this was while I was doing, a co I was actually working. Uh, then somehow I decided that uh, let me try something else. So I uh, started doing this coaching for the IAS. And uh, that was in the daytime. So night time an offer came. I must remember uh, two SMEs gentlemen here, Ubedul Lutik Borwa, who was the Director General of All India Radio at that time. And the other person was Brigand Roy Chaudhary, who was... I think the additional director general at that time. They said that, why don't you take an audition? And lo and behold, room number 55, I was there, appeared for the audition, no, audition for the announcers that they were taking. And uh, can you imagine the galaxy of announcers that were working? We qualified in that stage, which subsequently became great news readers. Uh -huh. Gitanjali Ayer, Ramu Damodaran, uh, Poonam Jaffa. You know, these were the people who had qualified along with us. So this was a job which began at 10 o'clock at night and okay. ended at 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So I used to get paid for just playing a few songs or you know speeches of our politicians or uh, discussions that happened on international in essence, in No, that was in no, this was in English. English. Okay. So this was. But was overseas in SMEs? Uh, overseas in SMEs was um, I was not involved in that and our. Uh, Program executive was Kavir Bedi's auntie, okay. his mother's sister. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, you can well imagine the amount of coaching we really want went through. I think my Khasi accent got uh, a bit of rubbed off, and a more into British accent had come in. And subsequently, over the years, back in Guwahati, talking Assamese all the time, yeah. <laughs> I think that bit has worn back, and you yeah. have come to us somewhere in a kitchery point in between. But all uh, said and done, this was another great part of Shillong, mm -hmm. traveling around, walking yeah. around, the rains, uh, for a 14 year old or 13 year old, you can imagine what an attraction it was. And another attraction of Shillong is, uh, you know, that was the era of the Beatles. Yes.
That was and even now, of, even now they have lot of rock bands coming to Shillong. A lot Shilong. of rock bands. And there was uh, a rock band called Ventures just above the hmm. house where I used to stay, and they used to jam every evening. So we used to go down and as children. Peep through the windows and vibrations, see. vibrations. No, that was there was one more vibration. Pentons, pentons. Yeah. Yes. So those were the groups that were they they used to rehearse and the first things we saw at that time was the electric guitar. Right. Now that is one part of it. That is the western part of it. Okay. Now the eastern part of it was Laban Bishnupur, where we had our Hindu festivals. Right. You know, Janmashtami. Shankar Dev's Tithi, Durga Puja. And you also had the Tagore House also. Yeah, you there, had Tagore Houses, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the both the Tagore Houses which were there, one of which is now the Meghalaya Assembly. Uh-huh. Uh, and the other one was the Tagore Houses. Uh, Tagore Houses were there. Yeah, there was one of which is now the Meghalaya Assembly. And the other one was, uh, I forget the name of the house, mm-hmm. which was round the corner in Kenshaw's Trace. Yeah. So those two houses. And the mix of, my, you know, my father headed a very strong, cultural body called the Shillong Kala Purusha. Mm-hmm. And that Kala Purusha and the Assam Club, these were the two institutions which really were not only cultural institutions of Shillong, but they framed the whole cultural scene of mixing people, the hills and the plains. I must uh, tell you that uh, it, the role of Gupinath Bordlo here, that he ensured that all the young artists of Shillong get together in what was known as the Hills in the Plains Festival, which happened somewhere around in 47, 48, 49, 50 till his death, and still continued after that. Uh, and uh, this was where all people get to got together. When we, as children, got exposed to the great music of Northeast. Right. Why I'm telling you Northeast? Because all the young students that time, if you remember, there were very few colleges in other places of mm-hmm. Assam, Abhijan, mm-hmm. in Shillong and Guwahati. Mm-hmm. So all the tribal people from Manipur or be it from Nagaland or Mizoram and all these places, they used to come and stay there as, as students. And they actively took part in the cultural programs. And also I remember two stalwarts, Philkin Lalu uh, and then our Ripple India, PR India, who subsequently became the so that those were the and, times, and that was the time when I think Louis Musso was also uh, no, very they, were, they, they were they were they came in much later, later, but this was the time when the emphasis was on traditional music. Okay, so you had Tagore there, Tashed Desh, or something happening mm-hmm. in Pochishi mm-hmm. Boishak, mm-hmm. in and around the Assam mm-hmm. Club, because the Assam Club was a mixture of all cultures happening together. All the people of uh, Laban, whether he was an Assamese, Bengali, Khasi, Nepali, all got together and, uh, you know, cultural events kept on happening. And you had people going all the way from Guwahati, uh, you had Bondana Burwa, who was the great singer, you had uh, the song publicity department. And most of the songs of Joyanta Azarika. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, around that, Joyanta Azarika was a frequent, uh, uh, I remember seeing him very handsome, very young. J.P. Das, even Mona Lisa uh, Lingdo, that song, uh, that song, those <laughs> kind of songs were there. Shilong Aray Guthuli, and then uh, I think you, you, you know, Swapnil is a very good singer also. I'll tell you, uh, and uh, I can't live him without one line of Shilong Aray Guthuli. I think we'll come to it later on. No, no, no. <laughs> you want to write right away? Yes. Well, uh, it's Guthuli here, but Guwahati Guthuli is quite different from Shilong Aray Guthuli. <laughs> uh, let me sing it to you know, mentally reconstruct the whole Shillong in the evening as we walk up the hills. Lahe lahe en har hol Duroni khasi gao kon Tumi arumoye mili Duyute holu mogon Shillong are kudhuli Hopun sahar ar marami haratar let me clap for myself. <laughs> Definitely. And thank you sure. for giving me an opportunity to bore you all with this song. No, I, 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 I am <laughs> sure of the viewers of this episode of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh would really be you know, enjoying this, you know, the conversation that I am having so lively with Sapnanil Borwa. Thank you. And uh, now let us move towards Guwahati. Yeah. Guwahati. Because this is the book that actually brought you here to my studios today. Yeah. And 
the cover of the book is from where we would like to start. This is one of the heritage buildings. I think this is one of the very few heritage buildings that we still have in Assam. And this one where the entire cultural soul of Assam is because this house had a lot of musicians, a yeah. lot of actors, yes. lot singers, of politicians, lot of sports, cricketers, football you players. You just name it and you have it from this house that we see on the cover of this book. So I, I think Arunosh, again I must tell you that this again I did I I was deciding in putting a photograph and having a watercolor. No, this is so I really decided that Sanjeev, Dr. Sanjeev Guha of GNRC now, he's a great, uh, he's basically a doctor, but he's a... And it has come up. Really uh, and I think... Uh, fantastic. The, when he showed me the watercolor, yeah. then I commissioned him to do another building on the back cover, <laughs> which again is, if some of you uh, who have studied in St. Mary's College or have done point duty, uh-huh. <laughs> I hope you know, I understand what I mean. Uh, in front of, this is the house where this restaurant called Briatrix is there today. Okay. So this again is another very old house of Guwahati. Uh, they have, the owners have kept it as it was 100 years ago, just opposite St. Mary's Convent in Guwahati Club. So I decided that uh, this was again a product of COVID. I think sometimes these kind of things should happen. No, no, no. <laughs> it should not happen. But yes, but at uh, least COVID has taught us a lot of things, a lot of uh, things. and a lot of but uh, then creativity I, has come out during so COVID also. This was another product of the COVID period. I said, mm. what to do mm. now? Then I realized that this book was also selling well. Yeah. Uh, and there were requests that why don't you write a small little uh, book on Guwahati because whatever books that are available on Guwahati, one was Hazarika's book. Mm. Uh, Kumudashwar Hazarika's book which was out of print mm. or not available and there was another book by a gentleman called Mr. Chaudhary which was a volume. So now people would really not like to read a volume and the other people, the smaller version was not and available. This, and the size of this is a really very... So uh, I thought that to, why not come out with a pocket book which will be yes. light on the pocket yeah. so far as price is concerned and uh, small enough for people to really look through. And my inspiration has been always the NCRT books, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> NCRT books are lovely in the sense that they give you the information uh, and tell you where to look for if you want more. Right. To do more. Yeah. So this was based basically on and a model of... I think, I think almost, if not all, then at least many of the Guardians should look for this book, which is available on Amazon. Thank you for that. But then... Acha, this book. We is, are now sitting on this uh, in this small uh, room, which is a, supposed to be an art gallery. Just behind you, because when I was thinking that it, uh, this episode has to do something with Guwahati, I have put two paintings of my father. Uh-huh. Just behind you, just a moment. Yes, these yes. are paintings done in 1941. This is the Nehru Park. Yes, and this is. Most, I think, uh, I this is Pandakanta Lolita. 52, this is Bokhista. Bokhista, that is, look at the scene and I think the beauty, well, this was Guwahati when we first came to, before yeah. the, one was the capital shifting and mm. secondly was post-80 when the apartment culture came into right. Guwahati and a lot of people decided that because of conditions in Upper Assam and other parts not being very conducive to safe staying and Guwahati comparatively was a safer place. A lot of people migrated into this uh, city and as a result of which a lot of people came in but the city lost its uh, character. That is how I feel. It, so, it was a uh, city which lost its ownership. Yeah. Uh, on that note, we will, I am sure that this episode is different from the episodes that I have been conduct. you know, hosting. This is a different kind of a uh, podcast that I had decided to take you back to the times we were young in Guwahati. So we'll continue this this podcast in the next episode on Guwahati and Sapnanilda will be with us for the next episode. 
So with that, we wind up today's podcast, Pixel Narratives with Anutosh and our guest, Sapnunil Borua, who will be with us for the next episode, which will be on Guwahati. Thank you. Thank you.